The big talker last week was the North Dakota Republican Party asking a Muslim leader not to pray. The invocation, or to give the invocation, I should say, on Ash Wednesday. Sticking around with us, the executive director of CARE Minnesota, Jelani Hussein. So, Jelani, you obviously came out with a statement asking the North Dakota Republican Party leaders to apologize uh, to the Muslim leader in the state. A couple things here. One is District 24 came out and did that. Uh, so, are you okay with their apology? And secondly, I hope you understand that not, not all North Dakota Republican leadership views the Muslim community the way that was perceived in this instance? I think it's uh, important to recognize, first of all, uh, you know, statements from uh, a representative or a leader uh, uh, is, carries weight. And uh, we, we saw that as really re religious intolerance and, and bigotry. Uh, we welcome the, the apology. It looks like maybe it's been removed from the Facebook page. I'll have to check again. Uh, we, you know, I was on a radio interview with uh, uh, Representative uh, Dwight Kiefer, and, and uh, uh, he sounded uh, very apologetic, and we accepted that. Uh, but now it looks like things have changed a little bit. I, I saw a news article that talked about uh, that uh, he may not uh, uh, be present when uh, the doctor who was going to give uh, the, uh, the the opening statements there, um, he's not going to show up. So I think I think we we this is an opportunity to maybe uh, talk about uh, the fact that you know Muslim Americans uh, have been facing a lot of uh, Islamophobia, uh, bigotry across the United States, uh, and I think that has a lot uh, to do with. Uh, how we view Muslims and I think this is something that we need to really as a community and I think North Dakota we really need to consider that um, I know for example I lived in North Dakota and, and I, I, I have to say that uh, I've been I felt very welcome being in North Dakota and, and the people there and so I think this is when it comes from a leader and the leaders are uh, have that this type of religious intolerance so we're not going to stand and listen to a Muslim uh, uh, as if you know any other minority you know, this this is not the way we move forward as a community. But, but let's be clear. It wasn't that they weren't going to listen to this. He, he says in his defense, and you heard him say this on the interview, hey, all I was doing was asking the question. It was Ash Wednesday. Should we have a Muslim leader here praying on Ash Wednesday versus a Christian leader? So it wasn't that he wouldn't absolutely li listen to this person or wouldn't hear, listen to the prayer. It was the question because obviously it was Ash Wednesday, one of obviously the holiest days in the Christian faith. And with that being said, and I'm, and I'm being very serious with you here, and you can say, hey, Chris, you're crazy, go pound sand. But I, I'm a Christian. I know you've got Ramadan coming up on June 17th. Will you have me come there and lead one of your prayers for Ramadan? Oh, well, you're more than welcome to. I think we need to. We need Chris. We need. We need. To, Let's schedule we, it. Yeah, yeah, and we need. We need. We need our communities to be talking to each other. We can, I agree. Uh, we can have uh, uh, perceptions and wrong information and misunderstandings be a bridge between us. I mean, North Dakota has one of the oldest Muslim population from the early 1900s. I mean, just imagine in 1900, there's Muslims living in, in Ross, North Dakota, not far from Bismarck where this took place. I think we, we uh, American Muslims need to be uh, recognized that we're part of that society. We we have the same rights to stand and, and, and give. I, I agree with you. I mean, the scheduling issue, I think the question should not be toward the Muslim. I think that was whoever scheduled this should be the one that should be asked. <laughs> and I think in respect of a person who's there, who's already committed to be there and to speak and then to say, well, I'm not going to to this individual uh, and then, you know, clouded with the Ash Wednesday, I think it's, it's important that we don't bring up this type of religious intolerance and I'm hearing now I mean just from just what I read online a little bit that looks like uh, the representative might not even be present when when uh, the doctor is actually called back to so and uh, we'll cross that bridge when it comes but what I'm most excited about June 17th put me on your calendar I will be there to lead a prayer uh, at your Ramadan celebration okay come on down thank you very much now I want to get to this I mean our president came out when he first initially talked about his ISIS strategy saying, hey, ISIS is not Islamic. I heard you say the same thing on the interview with Rob Port. I think a lot of people, because here's where I'm going at with this, Jelani, is the reason that you see, obviously, the trepidation about the Mall of America situation, the trepidation about the radicalized Islam is because of fear of the unknown of what Muslims are about. I understand there's different factions. You've got Sunni, Shia, and all this kind of thing. So I'm not saying that you, obviously, believe in what ISIS believes, but I feel like it's very insincere when people say, hey, ISIS is not Islamic from the standpoint that, they want the caliphate. That's what the Quran talks about. They think that it's going to happen in Dubik, Syria. That's what the Quran believes. I mean, do you I, I, stand by that statement that ISIS is not Islamic? 
I, I think I think that we're letting these terrorist organizations win when they are the only voice for Muslims. Uh, most people don't know the difference between Islam and Muslims uh, because they just don't know what is. Because which. there is no difference. Islam is there, the name of the religion. Muslims are the people that practice it. That's the, there's a big difference there. The people who practice it, they could be practicing it rightfully, wrongfully. But then the text, the actual religion, the doctrine, the faith. You know, that is where Muslims draw upon their inspiration to be good Muslims and to, to follow the Quran. And so I think one thing we have to recognize is that these terrorist organizations, which do not stand for any faith, doesn't matter whether Islam or any, any faith, that they recognize the value behind, behind uh, uh, the mask of uh, putting on this, this cloak of, of a rel your religiosity. And, and unfortunately, we do have... Uh, a, a large percentage of the American population who is unaware of Islam and Muslims uh, and has little contact with Muslims. But so and, let, me, let me ask you this, because I think this is, this is the yeah. rub. You're saying it's not part of Islam, but correct me if I'm wrong again, if I look at what, and there's a great article in the Atlantic, what ISIS really wants, and they talk about, look, we're here to create a caliphate. Is a caliphate inside the Quran? The, no, there's no such thing as a caliphate inside the Quran. It's a caliphate is an Islamic okay, uh, so system. Okay, so let me but, ask you this. Is the, yeah. is the end game here then to have the apocalypse take place where Madri comes in to lead the Muslims for the end of the world and he leads the Muslims to victory? Is that part uh, of it? Uh, I think you, you're, you're, you're missing me, my point here. When, oh, no, when I'm people, not. Okay, me, go ahead, just, sir. Go let ahead. Let me just explain. When, when we are talking about Islam, from the from the view of a terrorist organization like ISIS, and and I have to validate my religion, and me and the other, you know, 1.7 billion Muslims have to say, listen, this is what Islam is. I, I personally believe that the the lies that these organizations have been spewing, and this is not only ISIS from Al Qaeda since then and and, and before. These organizations have now become the voice, and, and unfortunately, when Muslims say this is not Islam, it almost seems like uh, people are saying, well, what, well, how come, how come? And the reality is, is that these organizations, and this is, again, like President Obama said, you know, uh, uh, just recently, these organizations understand what they're saying and what they're doing. This is propaganda that they are doing. And they see the fact that many, you know, many of the world don't understand Islam. So they feel that they want to want to, you know, get more support. But also at the same time, they want to say this. This is what Islam is. Jelani, so I, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir, but I've got a question to get to in this next block quickly. Comment again out of this article, what ISIS really wants. I just want to give you a chance to respond with uh, Princeton scholar Bernard Haeckel had to say. He apparently is a leading expert on the group's theology. Can you stick around for that, sir? Sure. Thank you very much. Stay with us. When we come back, much more from Jelani.